It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. <laughs> Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week is brought to you by Freeze Pipe. The worst part about smoking weed is actually smoking it. Uh, the smoke comes out hot. It burns your throat and causes you to cough crazy. And we all know the only thing that beats fire is ice. So now we're introducing Freeze Pipe, okay? Makers of a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, dab rings, and more. If you can smoke from it, Freeze Pipe makes it. The reason this small American-owned company has doubled in growth every year is because they're dedicated to customer satisfaction and building the smoothest hitting pieces possible. When smoke passes through these frozen glycerin chambers, it's instantly cooled by hundreds of degrees for a bigger, smoother hit. Pop one of these glycerin chambers in the freezer for one hour and the results will change how you smoke. It's like putting ice in your bong. If that ice played baseball in the 90s and bought supplements off Jose Canseco. So visit thefreezepipe.com and see for yourself why the internet can't stop talking about freeze pipe. Your throat and lungs will thank you. Use code IDIOTS and save 15% off your first order. Visit thefreezepipe.com and use promo code IDIOTS to save 15% off your first order. Now let's start the mother effing show. Big show, see? What up, baby? How are you today, my brother? Man, how are you? You got COVID or what? <sighs> no, I don't have COVID, but I, I, I was exposed to a couple of people with COVID. Uh, first exposure was on Friday. Okay. And um, I've tested since then. I've tested three or four times since then, and I'm good. But then the other exposure was yesterday, which was wild. What happened? As you may notice, uh, Big Wax isn't here. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Well, I mean, we don't know. It's like um, yesterday. Let me see what happened yesterday. Okay, I got tested. I did a PCR test Sunday. I did another PCR test Monday morning. I did another PCR test when I did, well, I did a rapid test when I did Nick Cannon show. Mm. So all three of them were negative. Wax did a PCR that was negative. Um, he didn't know he did two PCRs that were negative, a rapid that was inconclusive, a rapid that was negative, then a rapid that was positive. <laughs> then he went and did another PCR test that was negative. And so the nurse was like, well, let's just do another one just to be sure. And that one was positive. Yikes. So I don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, when I was doing a Netflix special, I got um, a test that was positive. Freaked out, had a guy come to the crib and give me two different tests. He gave me two rapid tests. Both of those rapid tests were negative. Wow. So I test positive, test negative twice, test again the next day, tested positive. I was positive for COVID. Did you have it though? Did you actually have Hell COVID? Yeah. COVID? I lost my sense of taste, smell, all that shit. You remember wow. that story when I said I was going down to my girl and I couldn't taste anything, and that's when I found out? <laughs> you don't remember what is, it supposed, what is it supposed to taste like, though? It's supposed to taste like pussy, bro. It's pussy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's got its own unique flavorless taste. Yeah, no, it's great. You're supposed to enjoy hey, it. Hey, all jokes aside, would you be able to taste vagina? If you weren't tasting vagina, like if somebody gave you something that actually tasted like vagina, would you be like, hey, this tastes like vagina? Yeah, I think I would be able to. I've fine tuned my pussy tasting skills by this point in my <laughs> life. But but the real reason I knew that um, the real reason I knew that I wasn't tasting anything is because um, she came. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it, huh? Hey, your boy was down there, baby. <laughs> Working. Listen, if orgasms, if orgasms are a side effect of COVID, your girl's like, get COVID. Oh, yeah. Please. Yeah, she wanted me to get that Delta, the whole thing. Run it back. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm just being uh I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'll get another PCR test on Wednesday. Cause you know, I got a show to do, baby. Yeah, you know what I'm I don't think I you can got do the it, radio bro. show from the house. I can do breakfast club from the house. I can't do the God's honest truth from the house. Nah, you need to get in there. I think you. I think. Uh, I think you're immune, dude. For real. I think you you're think immune. So? Yeah, and I know. For some reason, maybe some people just can't get it. Like my girl never got that shit. I mean, she got vax, but like 
She just never got it. She might have got it early, early, right before all the COVID shit hit or right at the very beginning, like before they shut us down for those like 12 days or whatever the fuck it was. Um, she she got sick, but she did. She had her smell. She had her taste, but she got like really sick. So we think she either got it then or she just is one of these people who can't get it. That might be you. Yeah. No, I think I think I got it early on, too. I think I got it. And I've, I've told this story when all of us were on vacation. December of 2019, New Year's, everybody was sick, bro. Me, mm. Duval, Tiffany, our nanny, like everybody was sick. Like Van, like everybody was sick. But, you know, we was just like, who gives a shit? Drink sour sop tea, drink rum punch, go in the ocean, bro. Take it to the ocean. <laughs> like, that, that, literally, that literally was our mindset. But literally when I got back, I didn't get over that. I didn't get over that till like mid-February. Yeah. And it was just like a reoccurring cough. And I might have had other symptoms that I didn't even notice. I might not have been tasting shit either, but didn't even realize. It. Yeah. Who knows? Nah, that's true. That's true. Who knows? But we're here, man. You know, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what 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 Wax is doing, but but we're here. What did you see this week that you thought that was positively brilliant? What did you see that made you say, "What a fucking idiot, shows"? <sighs> man, it's so interesting with the uh, like. I, I keep following up on the Astro World stuff, you know. Mm. And uh, well, there's two things that I saw that were uh, absolutely brilliant. Like I thought the absolutely brilliant thing. Did you have you been following the Dave Portnoy thing at all? The I guy, did on bar school. And I, have I thought the way that he handled the Me Too allegation was brilliant because like he completely flipped it to a hit piece. Like he just changed the conversation. Like it went from an allegation against him to. Oh, this is a hit piece, and he proved all all these people had you know disliked him in the past, and they'd been disingenuous in their reporting and all this other stuff. And now the conversation is about a hit piece. Well, I mean, if we're being honest with each other, a lot of these, a lot of these were hit pieces. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's sad because you know th- this is this is something that needs to change. It's not like you know America's culture towards women should not change. It absolutely should change, and it, right. and it has changed in a lot of ways for the better. But you can't act like a lot of people didn't weaponize, you know, the Me Too movement. Of course. They absolutely did. We saw we saw it play out in politics so crazy, whether it was Brett Kavanaugh, Trump, Biden, you know, Cuomo. everybody, every politician, everybody going up for office. It feels like no matter who it is, there's just something coming out of the work woodwork. And it just became this like perfect tool to take someone down that you didn't like. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah, they definitely weaponized it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know all the details of the port, the Portnoy, Dave Portnoy case, but I definitely saw him, uh, you know, start pointing the finger back at people. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you know, some people just don't, don't care to sue Bro. because you know they don't. It's, it, it costs too much time. It costs too much energy. You waste too many resources. But clearly, Dave got a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. It's it's weird. It's like. I don't know. If you assassinate my character, what other choice do I have? Like, 100%. Instead 100%. of defending my character, I'm assassinate your shit and prove that everything you say is a lie. A hundred percent. I don't know why people really act like you're not supposed to defend yourself, mm. you know, legally mm. at times like that. I was thinking about that with like uh, even you saw the baby situation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I always hate that things like that got to play out over social media. I never yeah. like that. You know what I mean? But I also understand I'm 43 years old and I just didn't grow up in that era. So what looks strange to me is normal to people of that age. Now, um, there's two things I think Baby did. I think that, number one, he had every right to record and protect himself because of what we're talking about right now. We live in an era where whoever gets the first narrative out there wins. And, you know, the baby is already fighting all this other stuff that we see, we've seen over the past couple of months. So it's like, does he need that? Does he need, you know, a woman jumping out there saying X, Y, and Z? Not saying she would, but what if she did? Mm. So he's he's recording himself, you know, for insurance. Um, it's easy. I, at first, I was like, well, maybe he should have just recorded it and not went live with it. Yeah. But. I don't know. Maybe you should show people in real time what's going on. The other thing he did that was just crazy. You had no business disrespecting her like that. Yeah. That's when you that's when you lose 
Whatever you think you were gaining, you lose it all when you disrespect her in that way. Because you can't call her a side B when she's the whole mother of your child, my brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like the, 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 the math ain't mathing. That's all. That's all. Yeah, that was a weird one. That that popped up on my radar, and I was uh, I was watching it because the drama was just so high, and I'm like a sucker for fucking gossip and drama. But uh, it w- it was one of those things that made me feel bad. I was I was just watching it like, Ugh, come on, bro. Like, yeah. you you don't got to put this on IG. I understand why culturally you would want to put something on IG live because you want to control the narrative. So you're basically going, yo, before they start saying I'm wild, before I start saying I'm all these fucked up things. I just want everybody to know exactly what's happening right here. But you could have just videotaped the shit, and if anything did come out, then you do it. Yeah, he made himself look worse. He's not very good at his own PR, right? Yeah, like, I mean, most, most most of these kids aren't, bro. But everybody was fighting for the baby and trying to get forgiveness. I mean, you know what I mean? Like you had all these people talking on your behalf. You had all these people supporting you. You know, Dave Chappelle coming out saying, "Don't abort the baby," and then uh, the baby. I out will here say just, though. I will say I don't we don't know how the whole situation started. And, you know, the young lady did get charged with simple assault. That's, and, and I, and I that's say it like this. soft, though. Like, come on, you're going to let your baby mama get charged with simple assault. Here's the thing. Well, as soon as I saw that, when I saw the baby call the police, <laughs> I, I was like, something's going down. I actually respect it. Yeah, because. I, what, how, how else do you want him to handle that? Like, you want him to get don't, on some goon shit, some street shit? Don't press charges. Like, like uh, aren't you a street dude? You're just going to be out here pressing charges? Like, what? Like, where's anymore. the code, yo? Like, like, do we say fuck the police or we call the police? What's the deal? You break, explain the rules to me. Because if I you call the police on your baby mama, like, because she did simple assault, what's simple assault? I don't know. I don't make the rules because I don't play by those rules no more. I am a corporate <laughs> entity <laughs> businessman. Yes. I am a tax paying citizen. I vote. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I have I have security, armed and otherwise. I love the life I live. Yep. Y'all can have that other shit. If I gotta play by them street mafia John Gotti rules, I don't got time for that. I'm calling the poll lease. Mm-hmm. Now, would I call them on my baby mama? I don't know. No, I don't think leave. I would. I don't think I'd ever be in a position to call the police on just my wife. Just leave. I don't that. You leave. Yeah, you that's leave. That's the mother of you your leave. child. You just leave. Well, you let her cool down, and then that's it. But what if you come back and she's still wilding? What do you mean? You came back too soon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You came back too soon. She's gonna calm down. She's gonna put some Netflix on. She's gonna chill the fuck out. Call her mom. Be like, yo, your daughter's wilding right now. Maybe you want to call her and like kind of work something out. I don't know. There's got to be another alternative than calling the fucking cops on your on your baby mama. If she's your girlfriend, saw. call the fucking cops. But once you got a kid, call the cops immediately. Call the cops immediately. But if you if you got a kid with her, come on. I feel you. But but all that lets me know is man, something was happening in that place that we don't know nothing about if he got to that point. If he got to the point where he was like, "Man, call the police, please." I <laughs> mean, something had to be happening, man. The chances are, I mean, look, I'm not trying to like, look, you guys make wise decisions, you know, with who you uh, have a child with on both sides. Shorty got to make That's wise awesome. decisions with him and then he got to make wise decisions with her. You know what I mean? You're knocking up these Instagram models. It's like, you don't, what is she? What type of dancer? Like, like she's an artist. She's a singer. Oh, my bad. <laughs> she's an artist. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I mean, no, but no, the, the, to your larger point, to your larger point. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 Show To your larger point, you know, let's take it out of this situation. Very true, man. Like, you really got to watch who you laying down with. Yes. Like, you, 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 you can't, like, I would never disrespect the mother of my child because you chose to lay with that woman. Mm. So it's like when you, when you, when you, when you, disrespect her all crazy after the fact and you say things like, oh, you know, you was nothing but a side B. Well, why was you raw dog in the side B? <laughs> and she said in the video, she's like, you came in me last night. That Whoa, shit, I saw that. That shit was kind of fire. I'm not going to lie. I got a little medium <laughs> that, breath that, up. That shit slapped that. a little bit. That shit <laughs> slapped a little bit. That shit was you know what fire, else slapped a little dog. bit? 
when you read her captions and the only way you can tell when she's talking about her child is based on how she spells duh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, like if you hear somebody just talking it, it'd be like, me and the baby are safe. And you're like, well, I thought you was trying to get away from the baby. Yo, <laughs> the baby called the cops on me. Well, take the fucking phone away from the baby. Why is the baby, baby got the phone? Why is the baby got the phone? <laughs> It's true, man. <laughs> oh, shit. It's true. Oh, that's I just, funny, though. It's just weird how you wake up on Monday morning, man, and it's always some bullshit. Like, like it's like the world don't stop. Like, man, there's I always know. something for us to talk about and pick apart. I know. And it'd be the craziest shit. I know. I love it, man. Man, I was thinking about this the other day. I'm curious about your perspective on it, but, like, you know how, like, here in the first world, we got all these, like, rules so that we can have, like, a better society because we, like, care about human beings, you know? So we got, like, yeah. rules. Like, like children aren't allowed to work. You know, they're not allowed to work because that could be abusive practices to children, right? Because the kids Absolutely. used to work in the factories and it was fucked up, you know? But we're so goddamn phony because what we do is we just outsource all that shit to countries where it's still legal. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you got, you have these American companies that will have child. They'll have their companies in other countries because child labor is. Yeah. So legal. we're like, child yeah, labor yeah, yeah. is so fucked up. I would never stand for that. And then we buy all the shit that the children put together. Or like, I think in Europe, like I think Germany's like, we want to be a hundred percent clean energy by twenty twenty five. And then they just buy all their energy from a country that doesn't care about having clean energy. So it's like, stop the charade, bro. You're doing the fucked up shit. You're doing the things that's wrong. Like, I was just thinking about this the other day, too. Like, you know how, like, every time we have one of these climate uh, arrangements, you know, like the climate accords or whatever, and and they try mm. to tell China and India to stop polluting, right? They're like, hey, you got to stop using coal because you're polluting the world. And it's like, if I'm China and India, I'd, be like, I'd tell the rest of us, I'd be like, y'all made the world polluted. We just started using machines. Like, you want us to stop having economic development because y'all fucked up and got rich in the process? Hell no. If I'm China and India, I'm not doing shit. Yeah, you know I mean, it's strange. With yeah. that? It's strange. And you know what's even stranger? Like, it's almost like these countries keep up, they keep up a perception that we know is not even real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it's so see-through. Yes. It <laughs> And it's like, and, and as Americans, we get to sit here and like, like wipe our hands clean. Like we're not involved in it at all. And then act like holier now. And we have all of our like wokeness and we have all of like our progressive agendas. And it's like, bro, we are just as invested in this fuck shit. It's just, there's a border. So we get to pretend like we're not. Yeah. Yeah. We're supporting yeah. all the bad things. You know what I mean? But as long as life is good for us here, we can just ignore it. And maybe that's good. Maybe that's cool. But I guess I just get annoyed when people act holier than thou. And it's just like... I'm, it's cool, but it's kind of rocking us to sleep, man. And it's something that Duvall says all the time. If you just want to see how America's eventually going to shape out, just look at what's going on in other countries. And, bro, we just simply not equipped for it. What do you mean? Like, we're just not equipped for anything. Like, we're not equipped for anything potentially bad that could happen here in America. We saw that last year with the pandemic, bro. Mm. Like, we're not equipped for anything. We're Like, we're not equipped for if... I mean, this will probably never happen, but we're not equipped for if a nuclear weapon hits us. Well, we're definitely know. not yeah. equipped... We're definitely not equipped for, for pandemics. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're not equipped for, you know, really, really crazy natural disasters. Yeah. I don't know, bro. But I guess you... But you could also make the argument, like... We had a pandemic where everybody was shut down for a year and the economy bounced back immediately. The, you know, people are living fucking good. Like the economy's in the toilet right now. Are you kidding me? Inflation's at an all time high. That's why Joe Biden's approval rating is so fucking low because the economy ain't shit. Nah, the economy's not doing bad. The stock market is fucking humming. Maybe because the market, stock market is humming. The stock market is humming. And a lot of times that's how we're defining the economy is like, the, the, there are so many jobs that they're begging people to work. Like you can get a job. Anybody who's unemployed right now, that's by choice. You can but walk you, into Target no, right, you're right now. You know, they, you know they had a bunch. They had a great resignation. I forget the exact number, but it was like yo, uh, the highest level of resignations ever this year. Like people just decided they did not want to go back to work. 
because some people want to be entrepreneurs. A lot of people, you know, they were collecting the PPPs and the unemployment. Right. And now they're at a point right now where it's like it's a lot of jobs, but it's not jobs that people necessarily want to work. But Yo. inflation is sky high right now. Yo, first of all, I don't even know what that means with inflation. I pretend like I know what it means. I don't know what that means. I can't even fucking That means that if you send Alex to buy a microphone right now, that shit might be three times the price. And then people keep saying shit, oh, supply chain issues or whatever the fuck. It's like... No, that too. That too. I guess I don't buy shit that's part of the supply chain because it hasn't affected me. (laughs) I don't think I buy shit from the supply chain. I think coffee's good. Coffee gets here. I get coffee. I get sneakers. You know what I mean? I'm I'm pretty good right now. Things that I need right now are pretty good. Yes, I mean if it right like that's all the articles that came out yesterday and today is so much economic discontent. That's why they say Joe Biden's approval rating is so fucking low. His approval low. rating is low because he's dead. That's <laughs> why. This is embarrassing. How is this not more embarrassing than Trump? The most embarrassing part about this is that it it completely exposes that the presidential position is useless. You could put anybody, the poor guy, I feel bad for him because you know there's no way that he dedicated his whole life to politics. He knows how useless the position is. You can just put anybody in there. It doesn't matter. And he's like, y'all are really going to make me do this before I die? Y'all are really going to force me to be president? You don't want that shit. Do you think it's one of those cases where you chase something for so long and it kept denying you? You Damn. kept chasing it, chasing it, and then when you finally got it, you realized it's not even what I wanted? Fam, I don't think he even wanted it. I think he wanted it early, and then once he saw what it was, he was like, nah, I'm good being vice president, just chilling. Yo, Joe Biden's the perfect vice president. Just walk around with your fucking uh, airplane pilot glasses and your leather jacket and say, hey, hey, Dune, and like point at people. Like just Say some wild shit here and there. Every once in a while. President? By the way, that's the, no. that's the role I thought Kamala was going to play in this administration. The oh. role that Joe Biden played with Obama, like Sorry. saying a lot of the shit Obama couldn't say. Sorry, like got, I thought that's the role Kamala was going to play. They got Kamala in a bunker somewhere, dog. I'm Honestly, dude, I, I, I feel bad for Kamala, bro. I feel genuinely bad for Kamala because every time she talks, the whole world is like, this woman sucks. <laughs> every time she opens her mouth and she's trying to be charming she's trying to be sweet and she's clearly like a smart effective um she was clearly a smart effective I, I don't know if you call them like politician or like public servant regardless if you liked her policies or not she was able to implement them right so it's like but for some reason it is just you know how like taylor swift doesn't seem authentic you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, you're right. There's like a barrier. The same shit happens with Kamala. There's a barrier, bro. You know why? Why? Because just like Taylor Swift, just like Kamala, they're both playing a game that don't exist anymore. That manicured, curated, you know, mm. presentation of yourself that you present to the world. People see through that shit. Mm. They're both playing politics in different fields. Mm. Taylor plays politics and entertainment. Kamala plays politics in politics. Mm. But those days are over. You yeah. gotta we live in an age of transparency. Yo, I'm reading right now, I'm reading Will's book, man. Will Smith. Oh yeah. First of all, the presentation that Will sent his book in is by far one of the greatest presentations I've ever seen in my life. I posted it on Instagram like last week. Okay. But it's it's liter it was literally like this box that had these keys and you take the letter and put the letter on certain words and different flaps open up like it was it was unreal. And then you can unhinge the flaps and hang them up on your wall like plaques. Like I got the plaques that came with the box hanging up in the kitchen in our in our breakfast area. So, you know, the girls can see that every morning when they're eating. But it's like one thing that I realized, man, and it's so interesting seeing somebody like Will Smith go through this. Will Smith was playing a character for 40 years. And when you read his book, the character was created for personal and professional reasons. Yeah. Welcome to adulthood. He felt like a coward. Huh? Welcome to adulthood. Yeah. We all got to pretend a little bit. We all got to play a little bit. We can't just walk around being ourselves. You end up fucking hugging trees and sucking on gemstones or whatever the hell you're doing in your backyard every single day. I love it. (laughs) But, but, But the crazy part is. But it's worse than entertainment, those shows. Yes, yes. think about it. Yes, yes, yes. We literally take on other names. Yes, yes, yeah. No, no, you're right, <laughs> like, you're right. Like we, like, we become other people, like, literally. 
And like, you know, you would always hear stories back in the day about like, yeah, you know, man, when you meet him, he's such a nice person. And when you meet her, she's nothing like that. But mm-hmm. yes, yeah, because everybody playing a fucking character. But it blows your mind that Will Smith. Yeah. Because his character was squeaky clean, didn't even curse, mm-hmm. you know, got flack from the hip hop community because folks said he was too soft, all of this mm-hmm. other stuff. But that was a character. That's what Kamala, that's what Taylor Swift, that's what they're doing. That does not resonate. Because just like Robert Greene said in the 48 Laws of Power, never appear too perfect, bro. Mm. You know, what's funny is that um, the, the, uh, there is an immense power to uh, gaining fame and then losing it. The, the most normal people... And one of the best thing that happened to me in my career was getting like a little like fame early on with like guy code and then losing it. And I got to reset and go, hey, who am I? Because the first time you get famous, at least for me, like I found myself wanting to justify why I was on TV to the people I met, you know, like these people would be fans and I'd be like, I want to deliver what they saw on TV. I want to make them laugh. I want to live up to this expectation that they have for me. Right. And you, you're living for these other people. That's probably what what Will was talking about. And I'm sure you earlier in your career, you walked in a room and everybody's like, here's the wild guy, Charlemagne the God. And you're like, OK, I got to say some wild shit. 100 percent. And then I think what happens is you're living for this character. Right. And then you can lean further into the character that gets rewarded. You look at a guy like Andrew Dice Clay, who's a Jewish guy from Brooklyn and then cultivates this very Italian influenced character. And then ends up living as that. And he is and that now. Is Jewish? Yeah, you didn't know this? <laughs> no, I thought he was an Italian. No, it's a Brooklyn. character. And now he wow. now he has to be that. That is who he is. I'm sure that there's aspects of this that are really him. I'm sure he grew up in the neighborhood around the guys, right? Don't get me wrong. But he's like leaned all the way in. I'm telling you, losing it. And then just being able to recenter and go, oh, this is who I am. This is how I like to act. And then, and then if you get some fame again, if you're lucky enough to have some success again, you realize that all you have to be is yourself, and that that's okay, and that that's enough. And then just being nice to someone that meets you on the street is maybe even better than making them laugh, right? Like just getting yeah, on I mean, that, that moment. But they, but you can't get it unless that's taken away. And Will has been famous since he's 18. You know, all yeah, these people have been famous their whole lives. They they haven't been able to just recenter and go, who the fuck am I really? And can I stop living for all these other people? Yeah, that's what he talks about. He talks about how, you know, personally, the character of Will Smith wasn't working no more. And professionally, the character wasn't working no more. Mm. You know, he was like he was like at first when it started happening in his personal life. Whenever something whenever you're whenever something bad is happening in your personal life, if you're still getting money, if you're still doing numbers, all of that shit, like you won't give a fuck. Right. Like, unless you're a very self-aware person who can check their ego. Yep. But when 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 things started, like, hitting the wall and the movies weren't, you know, doing the numbers that they once were and, you know, Hollywood is like, oh, I know you used to get this, but let me give you this. It's like, yo, it really made him have to have to hit reset. And he lost the fame. Yeah. yeah it's, I don't know it. if he ever lost fame. No, he didn't lose the fame, but he... I mean, Will Smith will always be famous forever, but he lost some of that influence. He lost some of that. Yeah, yeah. And he because he lost it, he didn't have to chase it to keep up with it. So now he's forced to make this decision. OK, I'm not making as much as I used to do. And I'm not doing, let's say, the films that I used to do. What do I really want to do? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it yeah. can be a blessing. I'm telling you, man, it can it's be a blessing. Because for me, it was the exact opposite. I was super successful and wasn't happy. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I was super successful and personal life was in shambles. Because you so got to put on a mask. Huh? You got to put on a mask every day. You got to pretend. Yeah. And, you know, you coming home to your wife and she's like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? You know, and then your friends, you got your friends like, when, man, I can't wait till motherfuckers see the real you. That's why you got to have women around you, bro. Women, mm. women will see, women will really, really see the real you. Your boys will check you too, but you got to really be doing some like, next level shit (laughs) for your boys to intervene. Yeah. Like you got to really be on a, like a whole different wave. That's kind of like a detriment to not just you, but everybody else for your boys to be like, yo, I think you wilding, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You you gotta be, you definitely gotta be hurting yourself. 
Like if, if I, I don't know, I feel like as guys, like if one of our friends is doing something wild, but he's successful and he's not hurting himself or his family, I'm like, yo, go get yours, do your thing, have fun. The second you start hurting you, that's where I got to step in. A hundred percent, man. It's just interesting. I mean, all of it is so interesting, but it's a journey that I hope everybody, I hope everybody gets to go on, man. Like, yo, you do not have to be stuck in no one place. Like, I would not want to be the person who was a character in their 20s and still portraying that character in their 30s, their 40s. And, yo, hip hop, this is why I love the fact that hip hop has gotten old, because you've watched Jay-Z evolve into Sean Carter. Like, yep. this is, that's who he is. Yep. He's the guy that wanted to grow his hair out. And be married and be in the art and everything else. Yep. And and those are those are things that develop over time. Yep. Same thing with Will Smith. Will Smith is like a really spiritual dude. You know, not he's he's always been that way when you read his book because of his grandmother and his mom and everything else. But boy, when you set a goal and your goal is to be the biggest movie star in the world, and then you achieve that, that's great. But what does that do for you as a human? What does that do for you as a man? What does that do for you as a person? Mm. Like, I want to continue to grow and continue to evolve because all that shit can be turned off. Mm. You're not going to always be the biggest movie star in the world. Mm. You're not going to always be the biggest comedian in the world. Mm. You know, you're not going to always be the biggest radio personality in the world. Right. Like, things change. Yeah. They just do. Yeah. So, but, but, but what are you as a man? Yeah. It is a privilege to be able to go on that journey, though. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. a lot of people got to worry about making ends meet. They can't even, they can't even sit back and relax and go, am I being myself? Right. They're going, I got to go to work and I got to be this character that I put on to work. That's why like everybody got to play a character. Like you go to work at the corporate office, you're not being you. You know, I think really wealthy people get to have this self exploration because they have the privilege to be themselves. But if you work at, uh, you know, blah, 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 and blah, 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 Johnson and Johnson or whatever, you walk into work, you don't get to just be you. You don't get to dress I'll how you want to so. dress, talk to people how you want to talk. You got to be a character, too. Just nobody gives a fuck about them. You know, it's so interesting that you say that, man. I find that some of the most whole people I meet, some of the most healed people I meet are people who are not celebrities at all or who aren't well off at all. You know what I mean? Like they just, that's just how they choose to live life. And they're also very happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's why I always say happiness is subjective. Like you could be the guy with $50 million and be miserable. Or you could be the guy with $50,000, you know what I mean? Or $5,000 and be happy as hell just because of the way you choose to show up in life. Like I really do be wondering, is Elon Musk happy? <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm on that too. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. That is a great question. I don't know. And, and what makes me say things like that is how I see how he 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 got at Bernie this week. You know what I mean? <laughs> yo, yo, so that was that was wild, corny. Like, Break it down. Bernie just said the most reasonable shit. Bernie said, "Hey, I think rich people should pay their fair share in taxes." And then Elon was like, "You're not dead yet." You know what I mean? Like, pay your fair share, Elon. But that's when you know you're out of touch. But guess what? Elon don't give a fuck that he's out of touch. He's a billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he did that for the other billionaires. Doug. Trust me, all the other 1%, they was like, yeah, Elon. <laughs> you ever seen that meme with the dude in the glasses and the hoodie? <laughs> that's how they was around. They was around Elon like that. The rest yeah. of us are like, the fuck is wrong with this dick? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not a big fan of Bernie's economic plan at all, but having everybody pay their uh, pay their fair share is, I think, a very reasonable thing. Like, there's other things you would clobber him about, and uh, the thing that's interesting about Elon, he's so brilliant, is that he got everybody to buy into Tesla, right? And once everybody is tied into your economic success, nobody criticizes you. It's like China got the world by the balls right now because they make all of the goods that we use. So they could have a concentration camp of Muslim Chinese people and the rest of the world just looks the other way, right? Because we need to get our t-shirts. 
We need to get our containers. We need to yeah. get all the things we need. They made the world dependent on them. And that's what Elon did. Everybody in this room probably right now, everybody on this Zoom is invested in Tesla stock. So yeah, I don't want to see stock, Elon go yeah. down. I want to see Elon keep thriving because then I thrive. Yeah, you know, my 13-year-old daughter literally was talking to me last night saying how she don't want no Tesla stock. Because Tesla's down. And I'm like, well, well, actually, now's the time to buy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, it's you know, it's it's like that's the other part of life too. When you start having kids, man, and like, I got some really brilliant kids. Like my daughter was saying stuff to me last night. She said to me, "What's the stock ticker?" And I was like, "Excuse me." <laughs> like, I'm like, "What? What are you? What are you talking about?" She was like, "What's the stock ticker? What's the what's the stock ticker symbol for Square?" I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and, I, and I go, I had to Google it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, it's, it's SQ or whatever. But just the fact she knows that at 13 years old, That's fine. those are the kind of things, man, if that don't reshape you as a person, nothing will, bro. I wish, I wish my parents were more uh, financially literate. In they were, though. Of- my parents did very well. They in, they uh, invested in, in real estate because that's the thing that they understood. But they didn't know anything about the stock market. They lost a ton of money, like you know, in a. They knew something investment. else, though, Cho. They knew something else. What's they that? They knew something else. Ownership. Your mom had a dance studio. Why you think yeah. you are so big on being an entrepreneur and oh, being independent right now? One hundred percent. I one hundred percent. Seeing them do it, seeing them hustle like that, seeing them work, you know, twenty hour days, like it, that instilled a lo- everything in me. But, and I wouldn't trade that for anything. I mean, you know, you get different advice from different people, but like, I know certain friends who grew up kind of like your daughters are growing up where like, they're asking questions about the stock market and talking about investing. And like, that was so foreign to me. Even now I barely invest, you know, only reason I'm invested is because everybody's telling me this inflation shit is coming and your money's going to be worth less, even if it's sitting there. So I'm like, all right, I got to get, I got to move it somewhere. But I don't know. It just makes me happy that your kids are getting into that early because it's a language. Bro, they teach it in school. That's my daughter, my 13 year old daughter said to me, I already know finance is the only thing I'm going to ever use from any of this stuff. <laughs> really? Like, like that was her. That's her language. She said that. I didn't confirm. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't confirm it with her that she was absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yes, I was like, wow. And they teach them how to do the stocks in school. Like they got classes, but and they're trading with real companies. So they're really learning about what these real companies are doing. Wow. So it's like, yo, at least you know what you're getting for Christmas. <laughs> because <laughs> right? I'm buying y'all stocks. The days of toys are over. I might still get the younger ones, but you miss 13 year old. We not, we not playing Monopoly with the stock game. We won't, you really going to be in it. And I showed her my portfolio. Oh, I showed her smart. my portfolio. I showed her my portfolio. I let her know, you know, how diverse my portfolio is. I show her my S and P 500. I show her the individual stocks I'm invested in, you know, ask her some things that she wants to invest in. Like it's Yeah. I'm saying all that to say if that don't reshape your 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 train of thought, there's no way you can ever be in character with that. Mm. Cuz these kids will humble the shit out of you. Man, I want to do that with um uh, I want to do that with everybody who works for me. I want to like I want to have like a fund where they can put a percentage of their income into the fund and then that money gets invested automatically with one of these bigger companies that obviously I have access to that they might not have access to because I have more money, right? And then even like for me, if somebody started taking my money 10 years ago and investing it, imagine what it'd be worth now. So then give them the opportunity to take advantage of this market, the ups and the downs, and like learn about it in a pretty safe way. And then 10 years from now, they look back and they're like, holy shit, thank God I was given that few hundred dollars a month to this fund, that's my kid's college fund. You know? 100%. That's how I feel. I feel the same way. I'm looking, because I look at my S&P 500 from last year and I know the market was different last year and the top, I think they said that, that like the S&P 500, that's only been down, like, you know, it's only been down, like that market's only, I could be saying it's totally wrong. I'm I'm, I'm quoting uh, Earn Your Leisure and, 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 and Ian, you know, the master investor, but it's like five, it's only been down five times in like the last 
however many years. And last year was one of those times. Mm. Thank God I had a financial advisor, you know what I mean, who's up on that kind of information, you know, who can tell me, look, you need to go invest in this, you know, right now. But I'm looking at my S&P 500 from last year as opposed to this year and the money that it's made. So I'm like, yo, imagine if, and they tell you don't even touch that stuff for like 30 years, right? Mm. So imagine if you get your daughter in there when she's 13. Mm. You get your daughter in there when she's six, when she's three. Mm. You know what I mean? How that's going to look in 20 years for them when they're still mm. young mm. and can still do things. It's like, yo, I, that's, yeah, that's, that's, it's the best for me, bro. Mm. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Huh? Let's pay some bills, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because I got to make sure that you guys are getting bricked up for the holidays, okay? You're going back home to your family. You're going to be staying in your family's home. Uh, you're probably bringing your girl there and you need to, uh, you know, impress your pops, man. Like, let him know that you're dropping dick off in the best way possible. And the way that you're going to do that is making some fucking noise in the basement. Wake up the whole family day before Thanksgiving. And you're going to do that with Blue Chew. Blue Chew. Okay, same active ingredients that's inside Cialis or Viagra, but this is the true. This is the one we swear by. This is the PEDs, the performance enhancing drugs for your dilly dong. Okay, you're going to get that at bluechew.com. Use the promo code idiots and you're going to get it for free. You get it for free. You just got to pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Make sure you use the promo code idiots and you get the best dick of your life for free. Ladies, get your man on it. You deserve it. Now let's get back to the show. Or let's do another ad, yeah. Yes. Uh, Let's do Cushy Dreams, man. Salute to our good folks at Cushy Dreams. The world today is nuts. And just when it seems like things are getting better, we're hit with even more reasons to be anxious and uncomfortable. And that's why our friends at Cushy Dreams can help. Cushy Dreams specializes in high quality, smokable CBD. And CBD has been shown to help with anxiety, depression, inflammation, even pain relief and more. And smoking CBD gets it into your system right away so you don't have to wait long for the effects. Cushy Dreams, extraordinary CBD rich hemp flower. Comes in eighth ounce cans and pre rolled joints. It is cannabis that ships discreetly to you and directly to all 50 states. They offer indigo and sativa screens that deliver effects like relax, create, hustle, peace, energy, and dream. I love this because when I go in any type of zone, I need to know exactly what zone I'm going to get in. Okay. I know what zone tequila is going to get me in. I know what zone, what milligram of indigo is going to get me in. So I need to know the zone I'm in, okay? Whether you want to smoke beautiful bud or pre-rolls, Cushy Dreams has you covered. Their popular pre-roll joints are rolled in organic hemp paper and feature an even slow burn, and pre-rolls are now available in five packs. With Cushy Dreams, experience the therapeutic benefits of CBD with full flower, full spectrum, and full flavor. We know you're sick of carts, vapes, gummies, and want to smoke your CBD, and now you can enjoy all the benefits of cannabis without getting high. Go to CushyDreams.com. That's K-U-S-H-Y Dreams.com. At checkout, use promo code IDIOTS for 20% off your next order. Smoke your CBD with promo code IDIOTS and get 20% off today. Now let's get back to the show. Schultz, you got some church announcements? Guys. Infamous tour. Uh, Toronto, man. Thank y'all so much, man. We added a, a show in Toronto. That shit sold out in seven minutes. I felt like a fucking rock star. Unbelievable support up there in Toronto for us. We added another show. Um, I think there might be a few tickets left to that. So, shit, we might just keep adding. Toronto, if you keep fucking with us, we're going to keep adding. Um, obviously, we got Radio City Music Hall. We added another one at Radio City Music Hall. So, get those tickets while you can. Uh, and then we added a bunch of a bunch more shows this week as well. We got Pittsburgh, we got uh, Brea, California, San Jose, California, we got um, Oxnard, California, Coachella, California, uh, New Orleans, Atlantic City, uh, Portland, and Seattle. We added another show in each of those cities as well. And uh, this week I'll be in Minneapolis and Fargo. And then the week after that, we got Thanksgiving. Week after that, Jacksonville and Boston. Go check it out. Thank you so much, everybody who came out to Chicago, the Chicago Theater. That was unbelievable. Biggest venue I performed in. And uh, we did two shows there. And yeah, Chicago, y'all always have held me down. And I just really appreciate that. And just thank you guys for being there. That was awesome. I calculated an easy $1.3 million just now. Easy. I mean, easy fucking money. I calculated an easy 1.3 just now. For what? For what, though? For what, though? 
<laughs> like, what you mean for what? You don't oh, do these shows for free. Oh, for all <laughs> oh for the shows? Yes. Oh, 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 that's light, my friend. That's light. Like, you're coming in too light, my friend. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Yo, go on, Charla. Big uh, heavy. Uh, if you count in pockets, you got to count the cargoes too. You know what I mean? Come hey, on. Hey, 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 hey. If you count in pockets, you better make sure you count the cargoes too, motherfucker. All right? Hey. Listen, mine is simple, man. Uh, this Saturday, November 20th. Matter of fact, let me make sure that's a Saturday. Uh, yes, this Saturday, November 20th, um, I'm having my annual turkey giveaway in Monks Corner, South Carolina. So yes. from 1 to 3 p.m., uh, pull up to the Berkeley High School student parking lot, 406 West Main Street, Monks Corner, South Carolina. Me, along with uh, one of my, my my charities, Third Eye Awareness, will be doing our annual turkey giveaway from 1 to 3 p.m. So pull up, you know, while supplies last, we got you on the birds. Uh, make sure you check out The God's Honest Truth every Friday night at 10 p.m. on Comedy Central. Uh, we had Ed Sheeran and Soldier Boy on last week. Um, very happy to see that both those conversations for various reasons uh, have, have have gone what the kids call viral. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's good. You know, it's always a pleasure to see like 10, 12, you know, different articles about content, especially being that we come on Friday nights. Friday nights is a weird time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Things be shut down on the weekend. But, you know, uh, yeah, we, we did. We did very well this weekend. Kevin Hart is on this week. We got Kevin Hart on oh, um, this Friday. Yeah. So just tune in this Friday, 10 p.m. on Comedy Central. It's actually going to be our capitalism episode. So you're going to see appearances from... You know, Dr. Claude Anderson. Uh, I don't want to say who else just yet, but Dr. Claude Anderson will, will, will be on. Um, Chico Bean will be on. And Kevin Hart is our very special guest. So this Friday at 10 p.m. on Comedy Central, The God's Honest Truth. And you can scream us on Paramount Plus right now. And make sure you go check out uh, the, the latest edition of Black Enterprise magazine. Um, Dolly Bishop, one of the most powerful you know, people in podcasting, according to Inside Radio um, and the president of the Black Effect Podcast Network, also a, a, a owner. She has equity in the Black Effect Podcast Network as well. She was she she's gracing the cover of Black Enterprise and she was uh, she was gracious enough to allow me to tag along. <laughs> so the new cover of um, Black Enterprise magazine, go check that out. You know, Dolly Bishop and myself talking all things Black Effect Podcast Network because you know, we just getting started, but we had a very, very, very successful year. So thank God you to bless. everybody that's tuning into all the different podcasts on the Black Effect Podcast Network. And I, I cannot wait to show y'all what we got up our sleeves for year two and beyond. It's not God easy, bless. man. It's not easy. You know what I'm saying? You hope to have success when you launch these businesses. You hope to have success when you launch these companies. Schultz, you know, you hope to have success when you launch these tours. But man, I don't take none of it for granted, bro. I know no. when you look out at that crowd and you see them sold out shows, you don't take that for granted, bro. No, it's the coolest thing in the world. And like, I'm like humbled by it and so fucking grateful. And yeah, it's just a wild experience. You walk out on stage, you see that many people that like decide to get a babysitter that night or get an Uber, put some you know, right. clothes on, buy these tickets. Like, yeah, it just means a lot, man. And like people who have come back year after year after year, that means... That means just so much, you know, because there's a lot of motherfuckers who can go out there and they can like sell out some shows once and then the jig is up because people go to the show and they're like, eh, this is whatever. But it's like, I want to make sure that this is the best short show you've ever seen. Like, that's always the goal because I'm so fucking grateful. I'm so grateful that I even get to do this shit for a living. So, so yeah, anything less than that is uh, unsatisfactory. We are so awesome, lucky, man. dude. We are so lucky. Blessed, man. I'm so sensitive in my old age. I'll be about to cry for every motherfucker. I just, I, I'm not lying, bro. I feel everything, man. And that, and I, I know I'm a cancer, so I'm naturally an empath. But I'll be feeling everything. And I'll be feeling extreme gratitude. Like, And it's not even just for me. Like, when even Of course, when I look at the Black Enterprise cover and I see, you know, Dolly and just knowing, like, man, that's my family. That's my yeah. loved one for real. Yeah. And looking at what she's done with, the black effect, like this vision, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I can go to your page and see these sold out shows. I was looking at the 85 South show and I was looking at how like Bro, three years insane. ago they were yeah. 
they were somewhere like a club in yeah. Greensboro. And, and now they're performing in front of 12,000 people. Arenas, dude. So that shit be making me like, I be, I be like choked up. Like, yeah. God damn, man. Like, when you know people's struggle and yeah. you know where they came from and you know how they started, yeah. that shit hits different, man. Yeah. That's why I don't want to hear shit about no Illuminati. I don't want to <laughs> hear shit about no Satan rituals. I don't want to hear shit about nobody yeah. having to be gay to get on. Yeah. Y'all just going to be knowing what people be going through, man. Yeah. I've seen it. I've watched it. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like, there's so many, there's so many people you can point to right now. I can't speak for the the generations before us. We didn't come up with them. I'm talking about yeah. this generation now. There's so many people you can point at. People can point at. I can tell you exactly how their origin story started. Yeah. At least professionally. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I they, they don't get it. Like like, and I don't want to say too much, but I, Charles, I've watched you cry. Yeah. Because things weren't moving the way you wanted them to move. Yeah. For sure, like man. literal tears. Yeah, yeah. And now what? We out here, baby. Come on, we man. Out here. Yeah, come man. on, man. That's, yeah, that's what makes it sweet, man. It's like I'm telling you, man. Sustained belief is a powerful fucking thing, man. And Break like, that down. it's just sustained belief. And I think it's like something like that that's resonated for years. You know, like you see all these stories, like even biblical stories, like the Jews wandering around the desert, and like eventually. They're like, nah, we got this. We're gonna, we're gonna get there. Just keep going down the path. And what, forty years later, whatever it is, they you know, they pop up on it, and it's like, I don't know, just believing in yourself despite everybody telling you it's not gonna work out, or it can't work out this way, or it hasn't been done that way, and then it eventually happens. Yeah, I remember like distinctly, like when I was putting out one special, I had mapped it out, and I was like, I'm gonna put this thing out, and I'm gonna put it out in chunks and it's going to gain some steam and maybe you will get on the radar of, of Rogan and maybe, you know, he'll give me the opportunity to come on his podcast, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask. It has to be something that, you know, comes from that. You know, I, I what I want to do is just put the work out there and, you earn it. and exactly. I just want to earn it. Like, I don't want no favors, nothing like that. If you feel like it's worthy, then sure. And I remember mapping that out and I remember it happening and it was surreal. Like, I remember doing a show in L.A. and then Rogan came to watch and I was like, what the fuck? And I remember wow. later that week, like getting a call. Hey, do you want to come on a podcast? And I was like, holy shit. And I remember going on the pod and having this, this, this great pod and then flying back home. And I remember crying. I, I, I was just like. To believe something for that long, we're talking about like years and then it actually come to fruition it was just powerful man i i don't know any other way to describe it uh, what I'm, you're talking I'm, about is the power of manifestation and yeah. when you realize how powerful your mind is bro when you realize the things that you can con conceive just by believing you would really 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 monitor your thoughts in a real way that's another reason i started going to therapy and all of mm. that stuff like that because i understood how powerful my brain was mm. so when those thoughts of like you know defeat and lack of self-worth yeah. And, you know, feeling like I may not want to be here when that shit started to weigh really, really heavy on be me. Careful. I was like, fuck Gotta that. Be careful. Because my mind, my mindset was, I don't know what got Lauren Hill to her point. Yeah. I don't know what got Dave Chappelle to his point back in the day. Yeah. I don't know what got Andre 3000 back to his point. And, you know, those 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 aren't those aren't extreme examples because they're still here. Mm. But just just the dis why they chose to disconnect. I, I could totally understand that. And I just didn't want that. I didn't know what that could be. I didn't yeah. know what that was at the time. So I was like, yo, let me go do some motherfucking work on myself because I know how powerful my motherfucking brain is. And if I keep telling myself this is what it's going to be, it's this is what it's going to fucking be. Because that's the thing that people forget. Like you hear people talk about all the time, like the secret or whatever it is, like in manifesting, you know, that's your right. dreams. But like you can manifest your nightmares too. If all you think about all day is how you ain't shit, how you're never going to be successful, how you're not good at anything, like guess what you're going to be? Not successful, not good at anything, and not shit. So it's That's like, right. I don't know. I try to keep those thoughts out of there. I mean, naturally, you're going to humble yourself. And especially if you're in a competitive industry, you're just going to be humbled by the industry. But like, I'm not trying to sit around and go, you know, hey, look how worthless I am. You know, there's a million people nah. on the Internet that will remind you of that. I'm going to take That's as right. much of that fucking time I got to tell me that I can achieve whatever the hell I want to achieve, even if it sounds absolutely ridiculous. That's I'd rather be positively ridiculous than negatively realistic. 
that's listen, that's why I love the internet. I love the internet because there's always those moments that like that 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 fuel you. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of times that fuel comes from those people telling you that you ain't shit. Yeah. Or those people telling you that you're wrong. Or those people telling you that you're doing it wrong. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love that. I love when everybody ra- rally around the loser. All right? Let me be over here and just doing whatever it is that I do. Point all the fingers at me. I don't want none of, I don't want none of that fake shit. Because it's all fake anyway, right? Because yeah. you, you know how you know it's all fake? Because those same people that will cheer you and tell you that you're doing it right, even though you're clearly doing it wrong, when you finally, when it, when it, when it, when it's finally apparent to everybody that you're doing it wrong, they all go away, and then they start mm. talking shit about you. Mm. So, the, so, so, the, so the love was never real. So I rather, yeah. I love when certain things happen, and then the process of, of elimination, baby. Yeah, just, just, just naturally, it just that person goes, that person goes. You pick a side, you go stay over there. Great. Now you make it clear for me and my vision. And for me and my conglomerate to do what it is that we do. And my favorite quote ever is from Nasir Jones. Much success to you, even if you wish me the opposite. Because sooner or later, we'll all see who the prophet is. That's just how I be feeling. So I thank God for everybody that's been uh, walking with us on this journey. Did you see this TikTok user who let her mom and sister sleep with her husband? What? (laughs) You didn't see that? Yes, <laughs> they're swingers. So the mom lets her sister, no, the woman lets her mom and sister sleep with her husband. I got to see this girl. Because usually oh, swingers are, right are, are uh, so, tell, tell, tell in there with you? Yeah, she's right next to me. Usually swingers are pretty ugly. <laughs> you know what Pull I mean? it up, Taylor. Like, I can't fathom that she's good looking. Because when you have something that nobody wants, you're willing to share it. But if you've got something that people actually want, you want to keep it to yourself. It so. looks to me, it looks to me like she's married to, they're white or whatever. Of course she's white. married to like somebody that's not white. It's not black. Can I'm you? thinking Latino in some way. And he probably got that thing, man. You think he got that hammer? He probably got that Essentia bottle, bro. He got that Essentia? <laughs> Can you open that up, Taylor? That don't won't work on my finger. Show, show it to him, Taylor. I'm, yeah, matter of fact, I'm I can't picture. fathom that. There's just no way. It's just too weird. It's too weird. I mean, sharing it with your mom? With the mom, bro. I'm putting it in the group chat. Hold on one second. Let me see your, your whole computer. This is just weird, bro. But how does the mom look, though? Uh, like a mom, hot mom. Hold on, Taylor. A mom and daughter have revealed that they both sleep with the same man and they don't see anything wrong with it. Maddie good. Brooks lives with her husband in the U.S., but as she explains in her TikTok videos, if she's not in the mood, she's quite happy for her mom to sleep with him. This is because both Maddie and her mom and her husband are swingers, meaning they are in open relationships, swapping sexual partners at swinging parties and events. Speaking in the video, she says, me and my mom are both swingers and it's great. You know why? Because when I'm not in the mood, I can just let my husband have her. Yeah, I'm that kind of wife. I let my husband have her a couple of times a week. No, nah, that's not. her mom that's that Maddie shares her husband with. It's her sister sometimes plays with her husband too. That's cat. <laughs> what you mean? That's cat, bro. That's not her mom is hotter than her. Real talk, if we're gonna be honest about it. And um, the husband looks Mexican. That's what I'm saying. He looks like he's not. He's not white. Clearly, no, he's not white. Uh, white people, we don't have that type of sex drive. But I, a Latino, I believe, could handle that. To me, that'd just be too much pressure to like sad. Like, dude, imagine disappointing a whole family of women. It's like one. <laughs> it's enough to disappoint just. Just your girl, you know what I mean? But you got to disappoint the mom and the sister, too. How do you even have Thanksgiving? You know what I mean? They all look at you like, all right, which one of us getting the mediocre dick tonight? I would love some stuffing, all right? But I guess I only can get the one that I'm cooking, all right? If somebody brings some real stuffing over here, yo, clearly he got to be putting it down, though. You're not going to share nothing mediocre with the family, are you? 
or you feel more confident sharing the mediocre. Because if it was the real real, you would never want to share it. But you don't, you don't, you don't give people bad restaurant recommendations. Yeah, but it's not your restaurant. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. When it's your mm. restaurant, it hits different. It hits different. I don't know. This girl's weird. Something's off. You sharing dangalang with your mom? That's just weird. Bro, it's more common than you know. I tell you, we had uh we had Shan Boo Dram on God's Honest Truth a few weeks ago, and like she's in a non-monogamous marriage. Like, yo, a lot of these kids are into this stuff, man. Like, I don't want to call them kids, but the younger generation is into these non-traditional relationships, bro. What do you think? You think you could pull it off? No, my ego is way too fragile for that. What about just you being non non-monogamous? I don't want that. I've learned that energy is um, energy is precious, man. I don't be wanting to swap energy with everybody like that. Like, like I would have to have like a real spiritual, energetic attraction to somebody to want to get with them physically, and I just don't need that at this point. I really, honestly, don't need that at this point in my life. And what when about, I think about what about ahead. what about just a, a sweet cocksuck every once in a while? Don't want it. Does nothing for me. It does nothing for me. Even back in the day, it did nothing for me. I just, it was just, you know, it literally was all ego. Yeah, but a sweet cocksuck was great, dude. Just a nice, sweet cocksuck. No big deal. Like, I'm not going to lie. I love the way you say that. Actually, <laughs> it's turned me on a little bit. I like Yo, you get a break? <laughs> Yo, I'm just saying, a sweet cocksuck is a totally different thing. We're not talking about intimacy, lying on one another, sweating. Keep your shirt on. And just a sweet cock suck at the ed- edge of your your bed, and then that's it. I'm writing that down. That's a line for something. That's like you walk up to. How much for a sweet cock suck? <laughs> <laughs> how many how many calories in a I'll sweet? I'll take uh, three saltwater taffy and one sweet cock suck to go, one please. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a warm sweet cock suck, please, with a little bit of salt around the room? <laughs> it doesn't even sound like cheating. As it doesn't, right? It's just it really doesn't. Imagine. <laughs> A sweet cock suck. It's so different than cheating. Cheating is intimacy. Cheating is like hugging and hearing breath. But a sweet cock suck, dude. That is so crazy. A sweet Man, cock suck is just totally different. You're gonna be like, you cheating on me. I'm like, don't ever disrespect me like that. I did Yo. not cheat on you. All I did was partake in a sweet cock suck. That's it. I did my part. <laughs> you know what I mean? All I'm doing out here is trying to have get a sweet cock suck, and you coming over here hating like Elon Musk. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Hop up out my comments while I get this sweet cock suck. I don't listen. I don't want those problems, man. I personally just don't want those problems. I'm good. I, when I say I'm so good, I'm good, bro. Yeah. How do you feel? You you feel like you need sweet cock sucks here? And there? <laughs> I mean, look. I don't think there's anybody on the planet except you that doesn't enjoy a sweet cock suck from time to time. Nah. Um, but, I like the energy of not cheating, bro. No, nah, no, nah, you know me. I've been good. I'm always good. That's that's what it is. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, but if like, for example, our girls formed a coli- coalition and it was the uh, let your husband get a sweet cock suck every once in a while committee or coalition and uh, they approached us and they're like, we think it's very important uh, for you guys, for your mental health to get a sweet cocksuck every once in a while, it'd be something that I would consider on behalf of my my wife. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I can't. I, my, I mean, eh. you wouldn't do it for your wife, bro. Like if your wife was like, I need you to do this for me. I need you to get a sweet cocksuck for me. You wouldn't do it for your wife. Would you would you want your girl to get a, a healthy poom poom lick? <laughs> <laughs> would you would you want her to get a healthy poom poom lick? They're good for you. They're nutritious. All right. It's full of protein. All right. Guys with no taste buds on that thing. All right. Ensuring that she orgasms. Yo, would you want um, that? Nah, that's crazy, bro. But <laughs> nah, that's crazy, bro. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. You you acting crazy right now, dog. You walk into the restaurant, you're like, no, 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 stop looking over there. Don't look at that healthy poom poom lick me. Yeah, Come on, yeah, yeah. what are you doing? Come here, this cock suck. Curb your <laughs> eyes. Curb your eyes. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. And listen, you know, who knows? Who knows how I may feel at 50? Who knows how I may feel at 60? Mm. You know what I mean? But right now, I'm cool. Did you see the story about uh 
The Virginia pharmacy that gave 112 kids the wrong dose of vaccine. No. Yeah, all of these kids, they, these kids were going in to get the COVID vaccine. And what they did was, um, you know, because the COVID vaccine is different for children and adults. So being that they didn't have any more of the children vaccine, this pharmacy thought that they could cut the vaccine to a third. So if they just gave the kids a third of the adult vaccine, they would be fine. <laughs> Bro, we got to stop acting like the medical profession isn't like any other job where people go in and they're having a shitty day and they just don't do work good that day. Mm -hmm. People got off days. And I don't care if you're a doctor, you're a pharmacist or what you do. There are people who have off days or they're not with the shits that day. And then they fuck up. They fuck up. And I bet you they fuck up just as much as the UPS guy, just as much as the garbage collector, just as much as everybody. They're not perfect. This is a perfect example. And then we go and sue their asses fucked up because they got the highest stakes. And they're like, oh, it's not our fault. It was the system. It was this. It's like, nah. Yeah. I mean, it was fucked up. If you was, if you was already skeptical about the COVID vaccine, right? Yeah. All right. And it took you forever to get it. You know you're going to be dragging your feet when it comes to the kids. Mm. Right? So you finally work up the courage to get your kids the vaccine. You take them to the goddamn pharmacy and something like this happens. All you're doing is giving every anti-vaxxer on YouTube fuel for their fire. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Because it's like, why don't y'all give a fuck more? Yeah. Is this is this is this is this stuff even really work? Like you went out of your way to make sure children could get it. You're pushing the vaccine on kids. Now when you don't have none of the kids' vaccine, you like fuck it. Just give them a little bit of the adult vaccine. They'll be all right. Mm. Yeah. And I'm never going back. Are There's they okay? nothing that can convince me to take my kids back after that. Are they all right? Yeah. They, I mean, yeah. From what we see, they're fine. All right. So then they're fine. What's the big deal then? They, they're they right. <laughs> it's the principal, though. It's the pharmacist, man. The pharmacist got to know better, bro. And guess what? It took a woman, a woman there notice. The woman that took her kid noticed because I guess the, the kid's one has a different color cap than the adult one. Mm. So the, she was like, well, why? Isn't that the one for the adults? And so she called them on it. And that's how they ended up like having to pump the brakes on everything. Wow. Shit is some bullshit, bro. Let's, yeah. let's, pay some bills and, let's pay some bills and come back and do Ask an Idiot. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is sponsored by the Red Panda Stock Club. Are you tired of not knowing what to invest in and what to know exactly about, okay, what are the safest socks to put your money in? Then join Red Panda Stock Club. You probably know Ian from his coverage in Forbes from the USA Today as one of the most exciting entrepreneurs of 2021, rolling out Unfiltered, which he records at WTF Media Studios, or from the hit investing show Market Mondays that he does every week with Earn Your Leisure. There are a lot of people talking about investing, but none of them have the track record that he does. Ian predicted, one, Bitcoin dropping to 28,000 two months before it happened. Bitcoin recovering less than 63 days from the low of 28,000. He called to invest in Moderna at 43 in April of 2020. It's currently at 408, which is an 820% return. Here is everything you will get in Stock Club. One, the best four stocks to invest in for the long term. Two, the best entries on the planet that will let you know exactly where you should be looking to get in. And three, a year worth of of the best companies to invest in, the worst companies to stay away from, the two stocks to invest in if we go into a full-blown recession, the easiest way to buy a stock in two minutes or less, their top three sites that they use for researching a stock, their favorite five book recommendations, unlimited access for 365 days, and a weekly meeting, Ian and the Red Panda family, every Monday night at 9 p.m. Central after Market Monday. So, if you're tired of getting your ass kicked in the market and want to be able to win in the market, join the Red Panda Stock Club and investing will never be easier for you. Go to joinredpanda.com and enter the code IDIOTS to get 50% off for the, for, uh, for the next two weeks. Okay, let me say that one more time. Go to joinredpanda.com and enter the code IDIOTS to get 50% off 
for the next two weeks. After that, the price will go back up. Now, this is a legal disclaimer. Results are not guaranteed. JoinRedPanda.com is not a registered investment advisor. All investment and financial opinions expressed by JoinRedPanda.com are from the personal research and experience of the owner of the site and are intended as educational material. Now, let's get back to the show. Taylor Gang, let's do some Asking Idiots. This is a great book I'm holding up to, by the way. Robert Greene, The Daily Laws. I've added this to my new uh, daily affirmations repertoire. Mm. So if you're a Robert Greene fan, if you love the 48 Laws of Power or the Art of Seduction or, you know, the, the Mastery or the 33 Strategies of War, uh, the Laws of Human Nature, you're going to love this. It's just a daily affirmation book that he has. And it's based off it's based off all those different books I just named, every book that he's ever done. You know, mm. he does an affirmation daily from from one from one of them. So go pick that up. Taylor Gang. Oh, here's an interesting one from uh, Beza Tensai. How do you guys feel about Facebook and the metaverse? Should we oh, be concerned? Great question, Beza. Charla, hit it. Um, I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it at all. Main reason I don't like it is because it's really going to, I believe, take away people's motivation to really do anything in the real world. Uh, we had a conversation uh, on Breakfast Club this week with Earn Your Leisure and, um, you know, Ian. And I've been talking to this about a, a lot of people. I talked to this with, you know, Tristan, uh, Tristan Harris, you know, who used to work at Google. And it's like some people say, well, what if this is the new real world? Reality is it's not. So if I can sit at home all day and create, whatever environment I want. I can create the clothes that I'm wearing. I can create the car that I'm driving. I can create the house that I live in. Like I'm really just stuck in, in, in here, in this virtual world. I don't even know if you're using your mind, to be honest with you. It's just, I don't know what you're using when you build this world, but I just think it takes away your natural drive to like actually go out there and do something with yourself. Yeah, I think that you're right, man. It's a little scary. It's scary, but... I also think it's dependent on how great your life is. I bet the worse your life is in the real world, the more that you're excited about the metaverse. And the better your life is in the real world, the more excited you are about your life in the real world, the less interesting the metaverse is. Oh. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I bet there are a lot of people who just have horrible lives and they can't wait for the metaverse to pop up. They're like, yo, let me get a redo. Let me restart this shit. I hate my job. I hate my family. I hate my loved ones. Finally, I get to just escape from all that in this dream world. I get to be the person I've always wanted to be. Wow, man. That sounds liberating, bro. That sounds super liberating. Well, I tell you what, when y'all talk about the movie Avatar, because this is all this is, we're all going to be able to have our own avatars. You talk about getting lost in characters in real life. I always is, remember yeah. that dude didn't come back at the end of Avatar. Well, what about Ready Player One? It feels like more like Ready Player One. I never saw that. Oh my God, that's a phenomenal movie. Watch that tonight. Amazing. Really? You'll love it. There's a lot of nostalgia in it. Great storyline. Like It literally is this. It's people who spend their whole day locked away in this, um, I don't know, I guess this metaverse is what they're calling it. Now, my question for you is, because I don't know this, is the metaverse different from Facebook's name, which is Meta? Or is Facebook creating the metaverse? I thought that he was changing the name of Facebook to meta. And then the metaverse, the metaverse is like a, an internet, but you get to exist within it as your avatar. What I'm That's wondering what I thought, is- like, a, like the sim world. Yes, but who's creating it? Is it Facebook's creation? Or are they trying to capitalize on this thing that is the metaverse by changing their name to meta? So it seems like they have ownership over the metaverse as well. That's a good point. I have no idea. I just, I just was I just thought that it's the metaverse and you can create your own virtual world with you and your people. Y'all can have your own community. And to your point, yeah, there's people that's already living like this. You know what I mean? I think that like with, with video gamers, right? At least video gamers are making money. At least yeah. video gamers have turned this into something like where they can actually, you know, eat off it. I'm sure it'll get like that in the metaverse at some point. But it's like, man, I would just hate to see the human condition of a person. Like, it's just certain things we need, y'all. We need sunlight. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. We need a certain amount of physical activity. Like, like, is there certain things that you need in order to exist as a human? I think if you stay in your house all day, man, and you be on that metaverse, what happens to the world? Yeah. I, and I thought about this, too. I was like, yo, maybe the world ends up like I am legend, but I doubt it. Maybe the world. It's, it's like during the pandemic when all of us was in the house. Bro, nature reset itself in a real way. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, huh, huh, huh. I don't know. I don't like it. It's interesting. I just wonder how much, like outside of our jobs, how much like living a lot of people are even doing, or are they already on the metaverse by looking at their phone all day, or looking at Netflix and just like watching movies constantly? Yeah. Like, do we do we really take a break from the internet? Not really. You know, if you're on your phone for six hours a day and you're working for eight, and then you're sleeping for eight. You know, it's not like you have that much more free time. So maybe this is just like a a more interesting, effective world to live in. Like, what if instead of just looking at your Instagram comments, you're engaging with people, you're making friends, you're building a community, and you're doing it as the person that you'd always like to be? Like, wow, man, that seems pretty... How do you feel about VR? How do you feel about VR technology? Man, that shit is so cool, dude. Uh I had to put it away because uh, I wasn't paying attention to my girl, but I was loving that shit, bro. I bought. Well, you got headsets. the joint. You got the shit with the goggles. What's it called? Oh yeah, I got that shit early, bro. I was all about it, man. I was watching surf videos and like surfing with them. I was doing the rock climbing with Alex Honnold. Like it was unbelievable. Yeah, I'm the thinking porn, about I getting try, it. Too. I didn't try to porn. I didn't try to porn, but that shit looked crazy. Imagine the thing that. about it, though, right? Um, man. Don't you feel like it, it 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 activates, you know, your fight or flight instinct and you 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 really need that? Like, don't you think it's kind of like, what about when you really need it? You know what I mean? That's interesting. Like, yeah, because uh, wait, are you saying like it removes the difficulty of life because you're not yeah. operating in something with stakes? Yeah, because I did. I, I played the Creed game, right? The Creed game was wild because you're literally in. Adonis Preed's body. So you can look yeah. down and see your abs and your arms and all. You can look and, you know, you, so you got Michael B. Jordan's body. Yeah. But it's like, yo, when these dudes are coming at you in the ring, yeah. you're like, oh, shit. And I remember I played it in Cabo and me and my, I don't know what my daughter was playing, but she was next to me playing it. And my mind literally goes, don't you get beat up in front of your daughter. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so, yeah. so it's like, then you, then you tell yourself this is just a game. Yeah. Wait, what if that affects you in real life? Yeah. What if in real life something happens and you need that? You yeah. need that cortisol to kick in. You need that fight or flight instinct. But your mind registers it as, oh, this is just a game. It's not a real threat. Ah, interesting. Yeah, I guess that's entirely possible. That's I mean, what I'm scared of. Yeah, that's entirely possible that it could kind of numb you to the reality of life because you're taking place in this world where there are no real uh, re repercussions. Yeah, that's that's interesting. You just start walking out in the street when you see cars coming because you're like, yeah, it's not going to hit me. It's going to go Word right through me. Yeah. And especially the more time you spend in that world. Wow. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see. It's the way the world is going. I find That's why I find I find Joe Rogan's Instagram page so dope because I'm like, like, that's the stuff I be reading about. That's the stuff I be talking about. You know what I mean? Wait, what, what, like what? I'm looking at I mean, all right of now. that. Like he be talking about the metaverse. You know, he was talking this week, and this is something me and Duval Ben said. Like how the next evolution in humans is probably going to be, you know, humans merging with artificial intelligence. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. And you see what Elon Musk is doing with that Neuralink shit, which is that shit that attaches to your brain. Like Son, man, we are already I don't know here we though. We're already here. Like, we, this is this like how different is Neuralink from this device right here I'm, that I'm holding? It's not. You know what I mean? It's like the difference is it's inside of our head. But this yeah. thing right here is connected to my body. I take it everywhere I go. It's got tons of information. It's got tons of knowledge. Like, I can f answer any question I need on it, right? It's like, I guess the only difference is the Neuralink is now directly implanted in my brain. So now I don't have to search this shit for all that information that's already in there. Lord have mercy. But, you know, it's a little more convenient. Bro, we're, we're about to be old ass men, dude. You can, you remember when we looked at our parents? <laughs> this is the crazy shit. We looked at our parents because they didn't know how to like double click a mouse. And we're like, man, they don't know nothing about technology. Bro, do you realize 
how far away we're going to be from our kids when it comes to technology. Like, Bro, I'm like that now. I just told you I was talking to my daughter about stops and being that she has an actual class that she does every day. Yeah. She's she's using language I don't even know about. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, Alicia Renee just hit me just now. Salute to Alicia Renee. Um, and, and she she was telling me about something she shared with me that she want me to share. It's actually a, a clip of uh, uh, Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran speaking about um, Brilliant Idiots and Armchair Expert. And um, I'm like, how do I do that? <laughs> you know? And she's like, man, get one of my nieces to show you how to work it. Like, I really don't know. <laughs> I'm like, like, this whole collaborative shit on Instagram they got now. Well, you oh, can collaborate yeah, with like, pages you, you share a picture or some shit? I don't fucking know. I just, I, I, I don't know. I got to figure this shit out. Let's do yeah. another Ask an Idiot. All right. My girlfriend is incredible, but uh, she wants to wait for marriage to give head. Let me tell you something, homie Marco, the <laughs> homie Marco. Uh, you don't get more head after you're married. So if you're not getting any head right now, you better get used to it. All this is showing me is that we got to open up a sweet, sweet cocksuck food truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. The brilliant idiots need a sweet cocksuck food truck, and that's not, that's what we yeah. that's what we advertise yeah. to. We advertise yeah. men like him who want to get married, but feel like their girl isn't gonna give head until they get married. So we pull up, pay a few dollars for a sweet cocksuck, and you keep it moving, bro. A sweet cocksuck food truck. Maybe we can do it virtually. <laughs> maybe, maybe, there's, maybe there's something we can do. Like maybe there's some type of device we can give guys to get that sweet cock suck feeling. You know, for those who aren't getting it from the woman they potentially want to marry. Yes, yes, yes. What is that device? Like a trip to Colombia or? Nah, I think it's something we can make. It let it be virtual. You put the virtual goggles on. So oh. now you know. You got all of these different women or guys you can choose from. You know what I mean? And you wow. put, and they probably already got this. You put the device on, and you get that sweet cock suck. Yo, that's crazy, but that might work. That might work. I'm sure they already got that. I'm almost positive they already got that. Bro. Yeah, but cleaning it is going to be a bitch. They got to find a way. Say what? What do you say? What do you say? No, I'm just saying cleaning that thing is going to be a bitch. That's, that's when you get sweet cock suck cleaners. Bro, this is a whole franchise. <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole franchise. Now you got sweet cock suck cleaners to clean out the sweet cock cup, the sweet cock suck cups. <laughs> so we got the sweet cock suck food truck, the sweet cock suck cups, the sweet cock suck cleaners. <laughs> now we got merchandise. Like we, bro, this is this could be the new Hooters if we play this right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. Like you playing? I'm dead serious. There's a need for this, bro. I uh, bet you if you search the origins of Hooters, it started somewhere like this. Wow, dude. Hooters was probably wild problematic back in the day, and we don't even know it. Yeah. Holy shit, that's hilarious. You want to yeah, do one more? Might need to do something to do it. All right, you want to do one more? Yeah, let's do one more and get up out of here. Okay. Um, that's a question I don't understand. Um, okay. Do you think? Oh, they love the metaverse, bro. Um. All right, okay. Insta Wee's twenty three ass. Um, are y'all already putting on the winter weight? Nah, I started, I started losing. I started losing on right. purpose. Like, like I, I wanted to lean out. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've lost like, uh, I think I've lost like 12 pounds. Oh, shit. Yeah, because I think I was, I got to like 181, 182. Yeah, you were letting loose a little bit. Letting loose a little bit. Man. I was wilding, man. It was a little bit of, uh, you know, still in pandemic mode. But I feel like I was doing a lot of comfort eating. Mm. You know what I mean? And being that I, you know, I do edibles on the weekend, you know, for my like anxiety and stuff like that. You know, that shit give you the munchies. So I was wild. I was and I was wild and wild. And I'm talking yeah. about red velvet cake, 
<laughs> cookies, <laughs> yeah. carrot cake, shit I would never normally eat. My wife was like, you don't even eat that type of shit. I'm like, I don't know why I'm craving this shit. Also, yeah. being that when my wife was pregnant, that's another thing that happened. Oh, yeah, because you eating with her. That's right. She was pregnant and she was, you know, having a lot of those cravings. So we was in here wild and them goddamn cookies from Wegmans. <laughs> Woo! That 15 pack of chocolate chip cookies from Wegmans. Fine. Smoke. Smoke. That red velvet cake from Wegmans, slapping. Yeah. Bro, Wegmans is the greatest grocery store of all time, bro. And this Listen. is coming from somebody who grew up on Food Line, Piggly Wiggly, and Bilo. Um, that is, uh, what is it called? Collective Wisdom in the North. I think in like the Northeast or something like that, like above New York. I think they're trying to come to Brooklyn Wegmans. But like people in the Northeast, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody else knows, but they fuck with Wegmans like crazy, especially like upstate New York. That is the greatest grocery store ever. They're in love with it. Nothing is better than Wegmans. And I think we're just starting to get them down here. But Whole Foods is like taking over the game. Whole Foods is cute. I like Whole Foods. Something about Wegmans, bro. Why? Me, my, what is me and my it? wife went into Wegmans. I was like, where has this place been all my life? Tell me, what is it? What's the... Honestly, man, when I think about it, I really think it's the food. Because they got a yeah. bur- the one the one that, that's close to my house. They got a burger bar in it. Yeah, I don't know if Charlotte, that's the norm that, with the Wegmans. That, that was they got a- Charlotte. That was one of your Charlemagneisms, bro. You what just, you hey, what's so good about the grocery store? Honestly, I think <laughs> no, it's the food. No, no, <laughs> no, no, nah, nah, that don't count. Because I'm talking about nah. Because it's like they got like a food court, bro. It ain't like I ain't talking about like the groceries in there. I'm pretty sure it's the food inside the food place <laughs> that makes the food place so good. Like, no. now that I really think about it, like, if I'm going to really truly be honest here, <laughs> what makes the food place good is the food. Uh, I would have to ask my wife what she likes Sorry. about Wegmans. Me personally, this I like the food court. Bro. I like you're the burger bar. Uh-huh. They, got, they got this pizza spot that's crazy. Right. The bakery is phenomenal. Right, they got this right. other, they got another bakery just for like muffins and breakfast shit. Like, I don't know. And, and, and Nyla, Nyla said that to me one day. Nyla was like, yo, you ever had the cupcakes from Wegmans? I was like, nah. And she was like, they slap. And so I know my wife always went to Wegmans. So I went to Wegmans to go get the cupcakes. And I was like, have you seen these fucking double chunk chocolate chip cookies? That's what I was drawn towards. And so now I, I can't see out of it. To it. <laughs> I was drawn to it. Like, like it wasn't your choice. Like they summoned choice? you. <laughs> they summoned me. When Wegman's chocolate chip cookies called me, I did not motherfucking call them. And then the burger bar, like we went there for lunch one day and had a burger at the burger bar. I'm like, yo, this shit, Wegman's is, yeah, I, I, you know, maybe I'm being a prisoner at the moment, but boy, Wegman's slap different. I don't know too many grocery stores slap like Wegman's. I'm serious. Because all these other stores just had groceries. <laughs> and what does this one have? They're like smartphones. They got everything else. They got like the apps and shit. Uh-huh. Like all that stuff. All that stuff I talked about with Wegmans is like the apps. Bilo, Food Lion, Piggly Wiggly. That's just like, that was like the flip phone. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you were happy when you went to one of these groceries. At least for me growing up in the country, I was happy when I went to one of these grocery stores and they had an arcade. Yeah. Not, a, not a whole arcade, but just one game. Yeah. One arcade game. You know what I mean? You sit there all day while your mom playing groceries. Not all day. Until you run out of quarters, but she only had a couple. But it's just, like, they were different. Wegmans is just, Wegmans slaps a little different, but I'll fuck with Wegmans heavy, bro. Yeah, now you got me want to it. go visit a grocery store. You never been to Wegmans? Nah. No, I did. Oh, I, did I, think I, was, I think I was in, like, Rochester or some shit, and I went. But, nah, uh, you got to do it. Go, yeah, go there. Yeah. Actually, go there, go there to eat. Mm. Like if you ever go into a store high and you just want to grab some shit, go in there to eat, bro. They got the food in Wegman slaps. Okay. I'm in there. Shit. I'm in there, right. bro. I think we uh, got it, my guy. Yes, sir. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit. You're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. And uh what Schultz is filming out of WTF. Media yes, Studios. Mm-hmm. You know, salute to WTF. Peace. Gang, gang.